welcome to live stream. I believe this is number four. Obviously, this is the first live stream of 2019, which I'm super stoked about. So thank you for, uh, yeah, joining me on New Year's Day. Kind of awesome. I want to start, uh, as always, by thanking the friends of Objective-C. I'm actually super stoked. Malware Bytes, who was the uh, original friend, um, sent me this awesome shirt. So kudos to them. Really appreciate it. The other friends of Objective-C, and again, these are the companies who support my research, uh, blogs, tool developments. Um, so again, very thankful to them. Um, Digital Security, again, my main employer. Uh, Sophos, Malwarebytes, again, mahalo for the t-shirt. Smugbug, the Guardian Mobile Firewall, and the Secure Mac. That's my dog <laughs> drinking, if you hear that in the background. Havana! <laughs> Oh my God. So Havana wants to say happy new year's as well. She's actually the brains behind this operation. Uh, when she's not hacking, she's out chasing chickens and causing havoc. So maybe you'll come say hi in a little bit again. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's get down to hacking business. So today I want to talk a little bit more about the keylogger detection going to show us how we can port that to Swift and implement that into a nice framework that other tools or libraries could link against. Uh, I then want to demo a, a new app I wrote uh, over the holidays, which is a generic keylogger detection that is open source and is going to be released shortly. You just have to uh, squash a few remaining bugs. And then we're going to talk about uh, WindShift, specifically Windtail, which is a new or newly detected, newly publicly discussed piece of Mac malware that was being used by a very targeted, fairly sophisticated APT group called WindShift, who was targeting certain individuals of a certain Middle Eastern government. There was an interesting talk about this at Hack in the Box, um, and we'll show that now we actually have some publicly available samples. So we're going to show about how to exploit Mac users using the techniques that this APT group used. And then also we are going to reverse engineer, uh, begin to reverse engineer their Mac implant, show some of the capabilities, how they persist, uh, some of the, uh, like I said, capabilities it has. So. As always, if you have any questions while I am discussing, if something's blurry, if you can't hear the audio, feel free to just type in the chat room and uh, not that good at multitasking, but I'll you know try to balance. Okay, so let's start briefly by talking about the generic keylogger detection. So if you missed the last live stream, I'm just very briefly gonna cover this. Basically what we did is we talked about how on Mac OS, you can create a keylogger by using what is called a core graphics event tap. Let me be talking about event taps a lot. I like to think of an event tap kind of like tapping a fiber optic cable or tapping into a phone line if you're trying to think of a more hands-on analogy. Uh, so when you tap a phone line, what you do is you, you know, you can actually put a physical tap or a software tap. And then as data, for example, audio goes by, the tap makes a copy and siphons it off so that, you know, whoever's listening in can hear what's going on. And so what an event tap does is allows you to do basically the same thing. And I have a picture of that here somewhere, one of these tabs, oh, too many tabs open, right here. And this basically illustrates how we can use a core graphic event tap to capture keystrokes. So last time we talked about designing one, you can see some code in this slide. Let me make this a little bigger. Uh, basically, you can see you call the CG event tap, CG event tap create API and install an event tap. And then once your event tap is installed, when the user types something, a copy of whatever they type will get passed to your event tap callback, which you can lock. So again, this is how you write keyloggers on Mac OS one way. We then talked about how to detect this. And the reason we can generically detect these kind of keyloggers is because of two things. First, there's this API called CG get event tap list, which returns us a list of any event taps. This is great. Imagine if you thought someone was tapping your phone and you could like go on your phone and say, give me a list of who's tapping it, right? That's kind of cool. So that's a way how we can scan or enumerate existing event taps. We then showed that there's this rather undocumented, or at least not largely publicly discussed notification 
which is the com.apple.coregraphics.event tap added notification. And I say it's not really publicly discussed because if we Google this, there's barely any hits. Uh, there's an Apple documentation, but it basically just says no overview available. So I was like, okay, thanks, Apple. Um, there's some Python code, but this is just checking that frameworks have been installed. There's nothing basically saying, hey, this notification is broadcast anytime anybody installs one of these event taps. So what we can do for generic keylogger detection is we can invoke the notify register dispatch API and say, we want to listen for this event. And again, this event is broadcast anytime something installs a new event tap. So again, if we go back to the phone analogy, imagine like your phone telling you anytime someone installed a tap on it, even if they were like, you know, at the headquarters or somewhere, uh, the phone, the phone office. So again, this is very powerful because what we can do is we can write some code to basically listen for this notification. And then when this notification fires, we know that someone's just installed a new event tap. So this is a really powerful generic heuristic to, for example, detect when new key loggers are installed. So we wrote this in Objective C because that's my programming language of choice. Uh, it's just what I'm comfortable with. It's very powerful. I'm not going to argue all the nuances of programming languages, but I want to show how we can port the same logic to Swift. And the reason we want to do that is because uh, Digita, and let me fire up this Digita VM. At Digita, we are creating this open source monitoring framework soon to be released. And what this monitor frameworking framework will allow you to do is listen for all sorts of interesting events. And one of the events that you can listen to is the event for a new keylogger being installed. Well, that was the plan. Now, this framework's written in Swift, so I wanted to port the generic keylogger detection code from Objective-C to Swift. So we're going to kind of walk through that now. I want to just caveat that my Swift code is, or my Swift coding skills are, let's say, <laughs> still a work in progress. Um, but, you know, this is going to be a good learning experience for me and hopefully for you as well. So very briefly, in this monitor kit framework, again, this is the open source framework we're developing at Digita, there's this concept of monitor. So you can have, for example, a keylogger monitor. You can have a download monitor. You can have a new process create monitor. There's just basically all these interesting events that and you can start chaining together to detect malicious events. But the monitoring framework doesn't try to make those statements. It basically just says, I will notify you when some activity of interest occur. In this case, a new uh, event tap being installed. So basically what happens is this start routine, start routine will get called and you pass in an event handler that will be invoked anytime the activity we're listening for, for in this case, new keylogger or new event tap being installed will get invoked. You can see I've already, I've already written the enumerate function and the enumerate function just goes through. You can see we invoke that CG get event tap list API. We then first invoke it with null to get the number of events. We then allocate memory, and this is how you do that in Swift. You basically call it allocate. And then we basically call that API again to get the actual taps. We iterate over them, and we're interested in ones that are enabled and that are of type keyboard type. Where do I set that? Oh, right here. So keyboard type is basically if it's a key down or key up event tap. Because there's also like mouse event key taps. I don't really care about those. So basically, I here say it, uh, what I say here is given that list of event taps, I am interested in ones that are enabled and that are keylogger event taps. And then what I do is I basically have this keyboard dictionary. I basically add a new entry. The key for that dictionary is the event ID. And then I add the options, the source. The source is the probably the most important thing. This is the process that's doing the tapping. So this would be the keylogger process. And then the destination is what process that keylogger process is tapping. Normally, this is going to be global, meaning everything. But you can also specify that you want to tap one specific process. So for example, you can say, I just want to tap Chrome. But generally, most keyboards say, I'm going to tap all. So again, we already have this function written called enumerate. And so we can invoke this to get a list of installed um, keylog uh, event taps. So what we're now going to do is we're going to write this notification handler. 
And then when it gets triggered, meaning the operating system has detected a new event tap and calls us, what we're going to do is we're going to re-enumerate the event taps because, again, it doesn't tell us what event tap was added. It just says some new one was added. So then we re-enumerate all the existing ones and go ahead and detect which one is new. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say uh, previous taps already have this allocated. This is just a, a dictionary. And what we're going to do is we're going to call the enumerate function. Awesome. So this is going to give us a list of existing or you know previous uh, event taps. We're now going to register for the uh, keyboard notification. I like to comment my code because I'm usually the one that has to go back and read it. And a lot of times I'm like, oh, what was I thinking? So we're going to call this notification by underscore, what was it, register signal dispatch uh, API. And the name we're going to register is for the KCG notify event tab added. Oh, it's tab completion messed up. OK. Oh, my goodness. So basically, the first parameter is what notification are you interested in? And we're interested in the event tab added. You could also register for the event tap removed, but in this case, we don't really care about that. We then specify uh, something called a notification token. And this is just so you can later go and cancel that. And you can see in the stop routine, we, we cancel that. So this is basically, uh, you pass in a pointer and it will get filled with your notification. So we're gonna pass a pointer to this, so self.notification token. And then the dispatch queue is what dispatch queue you want this notification handler to run on. We're just going to specify that we want the main one. So we're going to say dispatch, uh, dispatch. I think in Swift it's queue.global. Yeah. So this basically says run this dispatch routine on the main dispatch queue. And then the last thing we do is we have this block, which will get executed when there is an event. So I think the format, I wrote this down over here, is, let me see. So we have notify, register, dispatch, event type, global. I think we can just do this. No, maybe. OK. I'm going to copy and paste this because for some reason, it's not liking my format. Again, learning Swift in progress. That should work. OK, so now we have this notification handler. And let me try to compile this. It says it's failed because it can't convert. Ha. Huh. Maybe if we put some code in there, it'll be happy. Let's see. Again, like I said, print. And new event tap. Is this going to work? It's going to be happy. Still saying it failed. Hmm. Let me try this one more time. See, this is why I dislike Swift. <laughs> OK. Well, I think maybe once if we implement did I have this right? Um, okay, let me write the notification handler in here, and maybe that will be happy. And then maybe it will compile. Okay, so the first thing we want to do in this notification handler is we want to basically say we're only interested in notifications that match our notification handler. So what we can say is we can say if self dot notification handler or token rather. Uh, equals zero, which is the first parameter, we're going to handle and process that. Cool. And then what we can say is, oh, double equal sign. Yes, good point. We can then say uh, what we need to do is reget the list of uh, taps. So again, this is our notification handler, or rather, we're registering for notification. When a notification comes in, the code in this block, which is now happy because I added some code, will get executed by the operating system. So again, it doesn't tell us what specific event tap was added. It basically just said one was added. 
So what we're going to do is we want to get a list of the new uh, event taps so that we can basically diff the new ones against the previous ones and see which ones are new. So we can say new taps equal uh, self.enumerate. Again, we're just going to call that enumerate function. Come on, tab complete. And now we have a new list of these events. So now we basically have to diff to find new. And we can do that by basically saying for new tap in new taps.keys, because again, new taps is a dictionary where, and we basically are going to say is where the key in the new dictionary does not exist in the old one, which means it's basically new. So we can say where nil equals self dot previous taps and new tap again is the key. Awesome. And then here, we now know that's new. So again, I'll just explain this line of code right here. Basically, you say for new tap in new taps.key. So again, this will return all the keys in the uh, new dictionary of events. And then again, we basically say where nil equals self.previous self taps new key. So again, we're basically saying, tell me which of the event taps in this new dictionary do not exist in the old one. And then what we can do for that is we can basically now report that. So let me just, yeah, OK, that's happy. That's better. In here, so now we know that new tap is going to be the key of a new event tap. Again, because this enumerate function, if we scroll down, you can see that we added that dictionary value here right here, highlighting. OK, cool. So now all we're going to do is we're going to call the event handler that got passed in. And we can do that and say, if let tap, we're going to extract that equals new taps dot new tap. Again, we're just extracting now the actual event tap from that. And now we have a copy of tap in this variable. And we're going to call the event handler. And it's of type event taps event. And that takes a tap and we pass in the tap. So let's see if this compiles. Ooh so again, if we click on this, this will just go to the event tap, which is the event that is generated by that. OK, so now we have basically added the notification handler. So again, just to reiterate, I have some extra checking here that's basically saying don't have extra white space. So that's why we're getting some errors or rather warnings. It's just uh, something called Swift Lint, I think. But again, basically what we did is we added a notification handler where we registered for a notification. We said, hey, we're interested in the event tap. And basically when this fires, the question is, so this is a compare and contrast. Exactly. We basically don't know what new event tap was added. Again, the operating system just gives us this notification, but it's up to us to then go and re-enumerate all the event taps. And since we have a list of the previous ones that we calculated right here, we're basically comparing and contrasting or diffing the new one versus the old to see what or which event tap is new. And then when we find that, specifically, it's one that exists in the new dictionary, but is nil in the old dictionary, meaning it's not in the old dictionary, we know we have an, a new event tap, and we call the event tap handler. So now we compile this framework. And I'm going to hop over now to an application we're actually going to link against this framework. So you can see I've called import monitor kit. And the first thing we're going to do is we're basically going to create a monitor so more Swiss code. So we're going to say new uh, let monitor. So we're going to declare a monitor function, or variable rather. And we're going to say event tap monitor. So this creates a new event tap monitor object in the framework that we just created. We're now going to create, uh, or rather invoke the start function. Start. And this is going to start basically uh, the monitoring. So again, if we went back to that event handler we just wrote, this is going to register that notification listener and get called anytime the monitor uh, there's a monitor event.
So in this, then, we can basically say, hey, cool, print new keylogger detected something. And now we can also print out details of this. And I'm just going to cut and paste this because I already wrote this. And it's just not very interesting code. We're basically going to say, um, let me just grab this. Oh, we need to say event in. OK, awesome. This is basically, let's see if this compiles. Awesome. Basically, what we're doing here is we're instantiating an event tap monitor object, which is what we just wrote over here. This is the event tap monitor object. You can see event taps monitor, right? And what we're basically then doing is we're calling the start method. And again, if we go back to here, we can say the start method is where we created that notification listener. And then we just basically specify this callback, which will be invoked anytime there's a new keylogger. Again, we go back to here. We can see we invoke that event handler when there is a new keylogger event tap that's been registered. So again, that's going to invoke that code here. So if we run this, let's see if this actually works. <laughs> uh, OK, it's off and listening. We then come over here and we start a new keylogger. Do I have a new keylogger? Yes. sudo osx.keylogger. Boom. You see, we get our callback. And it basically says, new keylogger detected. It has the source PID, which is 25841. And it says the target of the event tap is all processes. And if you know, I type something here or anywhere rather, let me open this. We can first show that the keylogger is actually doing something. No. Oh. Hello, Twitch peeps. Happy 2019. And then we go to our keylogger. We can see that it's catching that, right? P and my misspellings. And all the above, you know, there's the 2019. We're, we're, cap we're capturing a key down and a key up event. So again, the key logger is running. We've generically detected using this monitor kit framework that there's a new key logger. And again, we have the source PID and a 25841. If we go back here, open a new window and do a PS on that grep. We can see that that PID matches the key logger process. So again, in our notification handler, we can detect what process just started that. So obviously what you would now do is you would basically say, hey, you know, uh, a new keylogger was installed on the system and you would generate an alert, email the sysadmin, some sort of activity. So that's kind of a wrap for the monitor kit framework. We showed that we created a new notification listener in Swift. And the cool thing about that is once that, uh, you have a ton of new tools. Sorry, I'm going to answer these questions really quick. Yes, Happy New Year's. <laughs> this is a great question. Uh, can you set this up in a dashboard so I can run all these things? Hmm, I should probably do that because as we'll see, yes, I always write new tools. The problem is there's a lot of them and they're all individual. Uh, so a common request has been, hey, can there somehow be a central dashboard? That would be a really nice thing. Um, I'll get back to that. I, I, I would rather <laughs> write new tools than a dashboard, but um, you know, maybe I can design something where they all kind of work together. But one of the cool things about this keylogger, uh, or rather monitor kit, is it's kind of exactly what you're asking for. And again, a very good question is it does all these notifications in one framework. So it also will notify you, for example, if your webcam turns on, which I have a tool that does that. So basically what I'm doing is taking a lot of my detections and tools, porting them into this open source framework. And then as you can see, for example, here, if we want to listen for new keyboard, all we have to do, we don't have to really print out the details, is basically create a new first link against the framework, and then just instantiate the monitor we're interested in and then call start. And this will give us a notification. 
So this is a very powerful technique. You don't have to actually know behind the scenes how this is all going to work. Now, this is going to be designed for an enterprise product. So yes, this will cost money, but the monitor kit framework will be open source is free. So in theory, we could write a dashboard that runs on top of that, that just registers for all the notifications and basically will just alert you anytime one trigger. And you can toggle on, you might say, okay, I don't care about the webcam notification, but I do care about the keyboard detector. So again, very powerful framework. And once you've linked against the framework, you can write your own apps or your own code to very easily and very quickly, uh, for example, get keyboard events with two or three lines of code. So that is monitor kit in all its swift glory. Um, again, it's going to be released here shortly. And the last thing I want to talk about in terms of key loggers is so many tabs, a new tool. So my one of my holiday projects was to take this code and then basically write a nice application that end users could install on their system. So I, yes, I apologize in advance. This is another tool that you're if you are interested in, you will install, it's, it's, it's separate. Um, it's kind of like the Unix model where basically you have individual tools that do one thing and do it well versus having one monolithic tool. And there's pros and cons to this approach, but as we'll see, this tool, you can, for example, turn off the, um, the status bar icon. So it's just gonna be running in the background and will alert you when key loggers are detected. So this new tool is called Reiki. It's a kind of a play on mm, Reiki, R-E-I-K-I, -I, which is like uh, energy healing stuff. <laughs> I live in uh, <laughs> Hawaii and you know, there's it's, people are really into that. So it's kind of like poking a little bit of fun on that. But also, you know, I wanted to use obviously key in the word. We can see the logo is kind of like the lotus flower, which again is like a Reiki yoga symbol. Anyways, what Reiki does is it will enumerate event taps that are, that are installed on your system, and then also register for the uh, notifications and alert you. So let's walk through this really quick and just demonstrate this. I think I have it over here. It's going to be released in the next few days. I'm just finishing a few lines of code, a few bugs. So we can run the Reiki installer. This is going to pop up and basically say, do you want to install it on your system? We're going to say install. Once it's installed, say no, we don't want to support Objective-C. No, you should all click yes. And then, oh, can I not move this? Oh, here we go. It pops up this, oh, my mouse, come on, where'd it go? Uh, this welcome screen where you basically can configure the tool, basically tells you what it does. You can say, I want to start it at login, which I would recommend, basically means it's always going to be running, giving you real-time protection. And also you can run it with or without an icon. So if you have too many icons cluttering your status bar, you can turn those off. We're going to leave the details, click next. So this thanks to, again, my supporters. And then you can't see this, but in my status bar, this is showing up on Twitch. Yes, there's a new icon right here. And you can basically see that Reiki has been enabled. So we can obviously disable it. If we click scan, this will bring up the main scan window, which will enumerate all your event taps. Now it's important to know there are some legit event taps that are belong to Apple that are doing things like filtering key presses. Now, I don't know exactly why, but I imagine for Siri, if you have Siri enabled, there's probably some hot key you can press to turn on Siri. So I'm guessing it's like looking at the key stream to basically detect when you like activate Siri. I, I don't know, that's, that's all I can think of. But here you can see there is a nice question uh, sorry, this is a, there's a nice uh, UI where we basically see the existing uh, key loggers. And again, we can see the tapping process. We can see the target, which is usually all processes, and then the type. So there's passive listeners and active filters. All right, so there's a few questions in the chat. First is, quick question, this only defense against software key loggers, correct? USB drive-bys are still effective. Yes, this is a really excellent point, and I believe I mentioned this in the documentation, not saying 
you should have read that. I'm just saying this is a really good point, and I try to clarify that as well. If I don't, I will go back and articulate that. But I think in the FAQs, here we go. Okay. So it basically says, does Reiki detect all MAC key loggers? And the answer is no. Again, so very good question. So thank you for asking. It basically will detect core graphic keyboard event taps. So there's a few other ways to do key logging on Mac OS. One way is to write a kernel extension, which is rather complex, and you have to get it signed and loaded in the kernel and bypass um, the kernel loading stuff. So big pain in the butt. But once you do get a kernel extension loaded, you can hook directly into the basically the hardware keylogger stack and actually detect when a key press is pressed there. So you can do that in the kernel. So Reiki won't detect that because Reiki again is just a user mode application that's basically listening for new event taps. Luckily, the majority of Mac keyloggers, all the ones I know, at least in publicly available malware, uses use these core graphic event taps. So it can generically detect that. So no, it won't detect hardware-based uh, keyloggers. Uh, it will also not detect, for example, kernel level keyloggers. So again, very good question. No, that's don't don't apologize. I didn't post the link to this in in uh, in the chat room, and that's a good point to, to make um, because again, it's it's really only going to detect detect this kind of the 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 most common Mac keyloggers. But again, other tech techniques um, it won't detect. So let's just hop back to the tool really quick. Again, you click on scan and enumerates the event taps for you. You can click on rescan to re-enumerate the event taps. And then if we click on preferences, there's some basic preferences. Again, we can say we don't want it to start on login. We can turn off the icon if you don't want to clutter your event, uh, your status bar with these icons. And then it'll check for updates automatically, but we can turn that off if for some reason you don't want an update check. Now, the coolest thing though is it will notify you when somebody installs a, a keylogger, which is kind of the more important thing to do. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run Keylogger on my dev box. Great idea. <laughs> and we will see that, oh, I don't know. Can you, um, I get a notification. Unfortunately, it's showing on my other monitor. Let me see if I can come over here. Yeah, right here. Oh, or Geo. Right here. So on my other monitor, you can't see because I'm only Twitch streaming the one monitor. There's a notification that pops up that basically says a uh, new keyboard has been detected. And you can see there's others. I've been obviously testing this over the last few days. So in that notification, which is showing in the notification uh, bar, you know, pops up on the screen. Here, let me see if I can, can I maybe take a screenshot of this or something. Paste that here. No. Ha. Huh. Um, yeah, well, it basically looks like just like this. <laughs> you don't have to trust me on this. But no, I can prove it's there because, you know, today it just popped up. So if we click on uh, details, it's then going to load the scan window again and highlight the one that was just activated. So again, you'll get a nice notification anytime an event, new event tap is added to the system. And then if you click on the details, you'll get more information about that. So again, it's very useful, I think, to kind of have this running in the background because the majority of Mac malware that gets on an end user system is brand new and it's not detected by the traditional antivirus products. And that's not to really diss those products, but it is to say that having a tool that's looking for generic ac actions, for example, the creation of a new event tap can be a lot more powerful. Right, this keylogger right here is not detected by any AV products, but if it were to get on a system that has Reiki installed, Reiki will automatically grab that and uh, alert you of that fact. So again, it can detect even new malware, never seen malware, because again, if, instead of focusing on the malware, it's focusing on the event, which is the generic event of this event tab. So that's Reiki. Uh, like I said, it's going to be released shortly. It's obviously free because it's an Objective-C tool. Uh, it's also fully open source. So if you click on the link here, and I'll paste this in the chat room as well, you can see the source code. So you can browse that. And actually, let's do that really quick. Uh, let's just do it in Xcode because it's easier to look at. And then we'll hop over and start talking about some malware. So I don't know how interesting to you the source code of writing these tools, but again, because it's open source, 
we can very easily dig in and see exactly how this tool is written. You can audit it for security issues. You can understand its limitations. I'm a big fan of open sourcing, especially security tools, because then, then you know exactly what you're getting. So we'll briefly, briefly look in the at the main app to see what it's doing. Uh, you can see, for example, the first time it's run, I show this welcome screen, which just clicks through and basically allows you to configure. If it's a subsequent run, meaning it's been installed and it's running, we basically start the login item. The login item is that little listener up here, and then we basically exit or we show the scan window. So most of the action is in this login item. The login item is the is the thing that's always running. And we can see that if we click on login items, you can either use something like knock knock, or we can look at the login items. And you can see here's the Reiki helper. If we come to Reiki and go to preferences and turn off the don't start at login, that will delete that. So it's not automatically starting. Well, it should, I think we have to maybe click away. <laughs> okay, maybe this is a bug. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> Something I have to fix. Um, in theory, it's supposed to uh, toggle toggle that off. I really thought it should, but you know, yeah, maybe not. Okay, cool. Bug fix for Patrick. <laughs> um, but anyways, the login item is the thing that's always going to be running if you have that event toggled. And if we look at what that login window, login item does, let's just look at the source code for it here. In the app delegate here, you can see that we basically check the preferences to see if we should run with an icon. We check for updates if that is enabled. And then we call this observe method, which should be familiar to you. Here is where we're listening for that event notification, uh, that uh, KCG notification event tap added. And again, if there's that um, uh, a new event tap that's been detected, we call, we invoke our callback. Here's our callback. It basically generates a new uh, alert. It calls the show alert method. And this is we, where we build the alert that we then display to the user. And we deliver that. And then if the user clicks on that, for example, more information, we tell the main app to scan, which basically, again, will open the scan window and highlight whatever um, process triggered the new event tab. So that's kind of the overview of the code. Again, there's the login item, which is the thing that's always listening for these event taps. It's the thing that's running in the status bar. And then there's the main application. And the main application basically has this uh, scan window, which shows the scans, and also the preference window. So it handles all the preferences. And then finally, we have the installer, which installs the application. So it's going to say things like, you know, handle the install logic. So that's Reiki. I am going to hop in. Questions? Yes. Okay. Awesome. And the check for update never works. Okay. Cool. So let's answer some of these questions. Someone said, uh, I can't keep up with all the updates on these. Fair. Um, <laughs> The check for update should work. Um, again, I, not to knock my Objective-C tools, because obviously they're amazing. But yes, they are more designed for end users versus an enterprise environment. So again, there's a lot of individual ones. When there's an update, it basically pops up an update. It doesn't auto update itself by design. I didn't want my code to have auto update logic, just so you didn't have to ever trust me to you know, randomly install software on your computer. And also using the auto update frameworks like Sparkle, a lot of them have had security vulnerabilities in the past. By, so by not supporting auto updates, definitely reduces the attack surface. But the problem is it's a more manual process. So the downside is if you're putting these on many computers, uh, that's maybe some additional oversight. One good thing is I'm starting to put command line interfaces into these tools. So for example, where's Reiki? If we go here and say show and finder, I've built a command line interface for this. So what you could do is if you had a managed environment and you wanted to scan your computers for keyloggers, you can basically invoke Reiki. And if you do dash H, it should tell you what to do. And you can do dash scan and dash pretty if you want the output to be pretty. And this will generate some JSON, which then you can ingest 
email to, you know, a SIM or, you know, you can manually examine that. So if you're looking to de deploy this on several computers, I would recommend, uh, you know, pushing out the app and then either setting it to be uh, installed. Um, so it'll alert the users, or if you just want to, if you're managing those computers, perhaps create a cron job to, you know, once a day run a scan and then grab the output. This is just written to standard out. So you can say something like this out.json. And then that, uh, let me just make this a little bigger so you guys can read that out.json file will have the results. So then you could obviously, like I said, grab those and, and process that yourself. So that's a good question. Um, the, the digital, the digital solution though, will be far more enterprise friendly. And that's one of the reasons why I helped co-found Digita and we're working on that because you know, I want my Objective-C tools to be simple and free. So, you know, it's kind of a, a one person operation, me, and I just don't have the skills or really the interest to build like backend enterprise support. So the digital stuff is super cool because what we're doing is basically creating an enterprise version that will be fully deployable and, you know, work a lot more seamless in a enterprise environment. Okay, so let's go to some of these other questions. Check for updates never works. That's kind of my fault. Uh, what check for updates does is it just goes to this website product, uh, it's products.json and checks this file. I get a little nervous about updating this because then it's going to auto update everything. So normally what I do is I wait a few weeks and make sure the people who are manually downloading don't have any issues. And then once the basically, uh, you know, I'm like, this isn't going to catch all these Macs on fire <laughs> or crash. I then come here and update that. And so then the next time you start the app, it'll come and check. And if there is a new version, it will alert you. So that's why sometimes if you say check for update, and even though I posted a new version on the website, it hasn't been fully updated. Thoughts on these tools in a brew package or install upgrade. That's a great idea. There are some brew people, I don't know the right term, but that create recipes for that. Um, I think, for example, like block block uh, home brew example of that. Exactly. So again, uh, this is something that, you know, if people have time or are interested in creating these, for example, these recipes to deploy these things more uh, in a more automated manner, uh, I will facilitate, for example, writing better command line interfaces, for example, so that you can install the tools from the command line or run commands from the command lines as 